If you knew her dad, then you saw him in her. Kindness, compassion, faith, humility, gentleness, and caring heart. The one thing about him that people had kind of a pro and con about was the Ole and Lena stories. Um, however, if I tell those stories, I get like these, you know, dad joke groans. But when he told them, everybody thought they were hilarious. He told me, here's my favorite Lena and Ole joke. So Lena says to Ole, get out right behind that car and tell me whether the turn signal's working. And Ole goes, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew, if you knew Margie, Marjorie, I always call her Aunt Margie, but my, my wife tells me that she really preferred to be Marjorie. Then you saw her in Barba too. Love of family, humor, putting other people first, living simply, rooting for the less fortunate, counting your blessings, honesty, honesty as, as the day is long. That's what all those people meant when they said she was beautiful inside. So this honesty thing about Aunt Margie, sometimes that would bite you. A, a long time ago, uh, we were having a family reunion in Arizona. And I, and I hadn't seen Margie for a while, maybe two or three years. And I came around a corner and she ran up to me and she gave me a big hug. And then she kind of stepped back and she says, oh, Tom, look, you're putting on some weight there. Yeah, I see you losing your hair. <laughs> Looking kind of pasty. I said, well, it's really good to see you too, Aunt Margie. And I gave her a big old hug. And then I ran around the corner and Howard came up to me. And he gave me this big hug, you know. And he was, oh, Tom, you're looking wonderful. And I said, that's interesting you should say that. Margie was just telling me I'm gaining weight and going bald and looking pasty. And he said, well, you know, I've always, she's always been the more, uh, the, the more straightforward and honest than the two of them. <laughs> You're going to see a fabulous slideshow later today, and, uh, and it will document her outside beauty. But I'd like to talk about her outside beauty in terms of her smile, her laugh, her enthusiasm for life, her gracious style, her glow when her children or her grandchildren were around. It made people smile just to look at her. Before Barbara died, I wrote her a letter because I wanted her to know how we all felt about her. One memory was of a drive we took from Wyoming to Opaka with a stop in Iowa Falls, which is, of course, where she was living at the time. And that evening, we all went swimming in the, uh, the local pool. I think I was about 10, and Barbara might have been 12 or 13. And at one point, she went over to the diving board, and she sprung into the air, and she did this most magnificent combination, somersault, swan dive. I, I was just blown away. She was always elegant in my eyes, even, even at 12 or 13. I have a home video that my mom took of that trip. And it's the morning after, and we're packing up to head off to Wapaka. And Barbara and Mary both come out in their PJs to wave goodbye. And Barbara is just coy and beautiful. And Mary's going. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> some things never change. <laughs> I think if we asked Barbara what was the most important thing to her in her life, she would have said being a mom. So for Stacy and Brooke, I know that losing your mom is very hard. She was way too young to go. It's in these times when we learn how precious and temporary life really is. We can hold others in our arms for only just so long. Since our days together are numbered and counted and finite, we should find a fierce pleasure in each one of them. I think my earliest childhood memory was of my hand slipping out of my mother's hand in a grocery store. And my 
might have been about three. But just for a moment there, I, as she went around the corner, I, I found myself amongst strangers and alone and feeling very afraid. And then retaking her hand, which was, I'm sure, only moments later, I had my first definition of safety and of home. The connection of a child to a mother is formed before the establishment of self. And the loss of a mother leaves a void no matter how old you are or when it happens. The universe feels colder. You've lost the person who showed you how love could be done. My mother passed away many years ago, and so I think I can say with confidence that the day will come when you're thinking of her, that there will be a smile on your face before a tear in your eye. The memory of your mother will be a sad, sweet feeling in your heart of a power and holier sort than you have ever known before. It has been said that grief is the price we pay for love. And I would add that the deeper the love, the more agonizing the grief. But we would not trade even that grief for anything because that love is the best thing that life has to offer. Our faith involves a whisper from beyond time that says death is not final and that hope is the barrier against despair. When we feel forsaken, Christ is there for us. When we are weak and vulnerable, God is with us. When as he was dying, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. That was not a moment of resignation. It was a moment of trust. And that's all we are promised. And it is enough. So Barbara's sister Mary asked for the following reading. She couldn't have been, have found anything more perfect for this time. So please bow your heads with me for the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Oh, Father, let us not seek so much as to, to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned, and it is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Amen. Is that too loud? <laughs> All right, cool. So I am Stacy. I'm Barbara's daughter. And I wanted to thank everybody for coming here today. My mom would be so happy to see you all. Um, I also thank you for humoring us with a boat ride because uh, Taylor Lake was a really special place to my mom. And I didn't know this until the last year, but apparently when she was a young girl, she would come out to Taylor Lake at the Harbor Bar and she would, can't look at your Rachel, sorry. Um, she would swim back and forth across the lake with her dad, Howard, rowing behind her to make sure she didn't drown, right? Just to make sure she was okay. So Taylor Lake was a real special place for her. And tomorrow, Mary and Rick and Brooke and his family and my family were going to spread her ashes there. And it's just fitting for me, because, well, for her, because she loved it so much. But I love the fact that Howard and Marge, her parents, are buried up at King, and they're looking down on her, and Howard's still making sure she's okay. So I love that. 
She also loved to travel. My mom has been to over 35 countries in her lifetime, mostly with Mary, so she's traveled a lot. And I like the idea that maybe some of her will get into the waterways and streams and travel the world. So this is special for us to be on this boat. So I'm gonna try to lighten it up now, because I can't keep doing this. Um, when I was 42 years old, my own mortality, it just hit me like lightning. I had two little kids at home, and I was so worried about leaving them here on Earth, and for some reason I was afraid of dying, was scared. And uh, nothing that a little anti-anxiety medication didn't help. <laughs> it did. Um, but I also picked up a book by Rabbi Harold Kushner, and I don't know if any of you have ever read his stuff, but they're short and sweet, and they have amazing messages. And what that book said is that most people are not afraid of dying, really, the, the act of death. They're afraid that the rest of the world may not have known they ever even lived, right? It's about, they're afraid that they're not going to be remembered or afraid they haven't made a difference in life. The other thing that the book said was that the people that are not afraid are people who are surrounded and have had built great friendships. They're people who have had amazing family or great family experience and people who have lived a life of generosity and self-sacrifice. And as I was thinking about that book and my mom dying, I can tell you for certain she was not afraid to die, not even remotely. She was looking forward to seeing her parents. She was looking forward to seeing Judy. There were her old friends that have gone before her. But I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that she was surrounded by friends, family, and lived a life of generosity and self-sacrifice. I mean, she, the Marys are here today, her friends. When we moved from Nina, they were her besties and they were her rocks. Sandy Peters, she had, she had friends from all walks of life. Sandy was a, a neighbor of ours. They've known each other for 45, probably plus years. Used to play cards together and Sandy's here today. Um, she met friends through work. She had young friends, old friends. I mean, when she moved to Arizona, I would call her up and say, hi mom, you know, are you doing okay? Oh yeah, I'm going to the Steely Dan concert tonight. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm going to see Jimmy Buffett. And I would think, I'm 25 years old and you have a better social life than I do. Like this just isn't fair. Uh, so she had young friends. She had an old friend that I know um, was in her 90s and loved puzzles and my mom loved puzzles. So she would go over there once a month and they would have a puzzle day. She just had a wealth, a wealth of friends. She also was so proud of her heritage, the Johnson family and the Pike family. Um, I'm so happy that the that Evans family could all be here and travel here today. Um, unbeknownst to Tom, Steve Peterson is everybody's favorite cousin. So, so, so Steve, Steve is here today, and Roxanne, she just adored you. She just thought you were always full of great advice. You just had your head on straight, and you were a hell of a lot of fun. She loved you. And Scott, I don't know where Scott is. I think he's out back. But one of her favorite times was when Scott would call up and say, hey, I'm visiting my daughter in college, and can I just swing by for dinner? Um, she just loved being a part of the Johnson clan. As a matter of fact, she set up the first family reunion that we had on the Johnson side. I mean, Julie, you, Karen, she loved getting together with you as kids. So I'm so grateful you all could be here. And she also was so proud of the, the work ethic and the, the humanity and the kindness that came from the pipe side. Elizabeth, and this is where I'm gonna cry. I knew I could make the whole thing, except for this part. When her mom was aging and she couldn't come take care of her, Elizabeth took care of my mother's mom. And she always said, Elizabeth's like the third sister, this, well, third sister, I guess, second sister that I didn't have. So Elizabeth, I'm so grateful on her behalf for you. And Marlene, she always would say to me, I was so grateful to get to know Marlene better later in life when she would come to visit me. We had so much fun. So I'm just so grateful that y'all could be here. She had a wonderful family. She was as generous as generous can get. Um, she was generous with her time and her belongings and her money and her heart. She built a career out of it. She was a social worker in here in Wapaka and then when she moved to Arizona, uh, she opened an assisted living facility to take care of aging people. And then towards the end of her career, she ran a lunch program at a senior center. And she didn't just run the lunch program, she became the senior center. Everybody knew Barb, and she would actually put a letter every month in the newsletter to all of these folks. Um, as a matter of fact, I included one in your program, so read it. My mom wrote it. She would write these beautiful letters every month to everybody there. 
she would set up, um, you know, bingo nights, and she just made it a fun place to be. Everybody loved her. She was very generous. And self-sacrifice, she had down pat. She's a bit of a martyr. That's a whole other, you know, we can talk about that offline. Those are my own issues. Um, but anyway, uh, she did live a life of self-sacrifice. She... I don't think she ever really wanted to get married, to be honest, or have kids. She wanted to travel the world. She wanted to be a flight attendant. She even took um, she even took her pilot's license when she got older. And she has a bachelor's degree with honors from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh in psychology. And she never did any of that. She, instead, she got married and she got stuck with broken eyes, which is quite a sacrifice. Um, so, yeah. I, in the last few years that she should have been spending traveling in her retirement, she took care of her mom. Um, she and Mary, and she never, ever resented it. She was grateful for the honor to take care of her mom. That to me is some sacrifice. So my mom was not afraid to die. She's surrounded by family, surrounded by friends. She knew where she was going, and she lived a life of generosity and self-sacrifice. I just can't put it any other way. For me personally, and then I'll shut up and give you to whoever's next on the list. For me, she lived a life of integrity. And I'm just gonna give my kids a lesson because they might not know what that word means. It just means she led by example. She lived a life by the values that she held dear. So for example, if you think honesty is important and you don't lie, you have integrity. I'm probably maybe not explaining it right, but that's basically it. And my mom had more integrity than anybody I knew. She taught my brother and I all the basic things you teach your kids, but she lived that way. So, you know, the golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated. I already talked about her life and how she made a career out of helping other people. Um, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I can honestly say, I swear to you, I've never heard my mother say an ill will about another person, ever. That is impossible to do. It's impossible to do. My mom. Sorry. No problem, Billy. I know Billy, the driver, by the way, since he was about six years old. So I'm grateful to have him here today. So uh, where was I? What was I talking about? Um, integrity. Yes. If you, do, if you can't have anything, nice, if you don't have anything nice to say, I called her friend Colleen Bloom after she died. And Colleen said, you know, we used to get together, all the moms, with, with, for coffee once a week. And we would all chat, and we would all talk about our kids and the trouble. Everybody was talking about the, ki the trouble the kids were getting in, right? Whether they'd skipped school or they screwed up on a test or went to too many parties. Um, and Colleen said, you know, your mother would never say a bad word about you two. And believe you, there was plenty of material she could have used. <laughs> Um, yes, and then, you know, treating others as, as you want to be treated, but we went through that one. So, um, love thy neighbor as thyself, that, that's the other one. Um, I, I'm guessing by the age of most of the people here that y'all remember the Sears catalog, and if you didn't remember the Sears catalog, it was about an inch thick, it was as thick as the phone book, and it had clothes in it, and it had... Um, toys and the toy section was massive and my brother and I would come home from school and we would fight over that catalog. We would fight over it. And Brooke had everything circled in the whole thing. Every Star Wars story, you can name it. And I had every do page dog ear and by the end of November that thing looked like a rat's nest. <laughs> anyway, I think my mom thought we were awfully spoiled children. And she also loved to give back to the world. So she had collected her margarine dishes all year and she would save everybody's Christmas cards. And we would cut out the tops of the Christmas cards and glue them onto the margarine dishes and sit at the table. And she'd go get Brock's candy and we'd fill those things full of Brock's candy until we had buckets of them. And we'd haul them down to the harbor or to the veterans home and hand them out to all the folks there who were lonely and needed to see a child. And it was just a beautiful experience. So for me, the best thing she gave me was that life of integrity, and she's gonna live on. Not We're not gonna live on as great as my mom did, but my brother works at the veterans home today, and he cares for a lot of elderly people. My kids and I, for years before COVID, would do homeless baskets for kids in need. So those things live on. She will live on. I guess the last thing I'll leave you with is a little piece of advice she gave me when I was growing up. I had friends who were great at gymnastics, and one who raced boats, and gosh, um, just, 
kids who could do lots of things. And I didn't have a thing. I did not have a thing. And so my mom said to me, Stacy, it's better to be a little good at a lot of things than really great at one because you're gonna get along and love your life a lot more. So I recorded a song for her today, <laughs> which I don't think you'll be able to hear in the back of the boat because we have it on a speaker. So I'm actually, good for you. <laughs> good for you back here. That you don't know. But anyway, I'm just gonna, this is for my mom. This is for my mom. stands out most to me and most importantly Barbara's life was always about her friends and her family Tom's talked about that Stacy's talked about that that's what was most important that's what she cared about the most Barbara and I first met in 1979 December when she brought her family out to Arizona for our small backyard wedding 
Barbara was so very warm and welcoming, bringing me into her, her and Mary's families. At the time, I also remember she had two fairly well-behaved kids, and Stacy and Naomi, <laughs> and Brooke and Seven at that age. This was the first of many wonderful holidays that we spent together as a family. The following summer, Mary and I went to Wapaka for a family gathering that naturally took place at Barb's home here in Wapaka. Over the several days, I met the rest of the local Johnson clan family members. And I'm not as organized as Tom with his little. <laughs> little At that gathering, I began to appreciate the Wisconsin Midwestern way of life, which I'm from the West, so I knew nothing about this. But it, you know, this is really where family is where it happens. Barbara and her family were the center of that experience for us and for me for many years to come. Over the years, Mary and I came back to Wisconsin a lot to see Barbara. Christmas 1982, when I ice skated for the once and only time in my life. <laughs> August 1985, we were here for the celebration of Marge and Howard's 40th wedding anniversary. November 1970, we came again for Christmas and all the dinner and events were at Barb's house. However, as mentioned by, by Stacy, the first really large and important family that took place was July 1987, when Barb organized the first family Johnson reunion. She held it at her lakeside home, I don't know what lake we're on right now, but somewhere around here. She was such a great hostess for that. This is where Barb's love of family really showed for me, the effort, she, the work she put into that. Almost all of the remaining living Johnson family patriarchs and the first cousins attended that. So she made everybody feel right at home and part of this larger family that she helped put together. She understood the value in getting the 12 cousins together and their families at the time, all the remaining original Johnson family and brothers and sisters were still with us. Fortunately, Barb's idea took hold and been followed by, you know, by annual family reunion since then. I give Barb a lot of credit for getting this valuable family tradition started. Fortunately, not many of us have Barb's photos and our own photos from these great family reunions. In June 1994, Barbara decided to move to Arizona to be near us and also live where it was a little warmer. I remember her move into her new apartment was on one of the hottest days of the summer, somewhere <laughs> over 115 degrees or something like that. We moved all of her wonderful family heirlooms that she brought out up three stories by elevator. Quite an exhausting day. Thank God Brooke came along to do all the heavy lifting. I don't know how close Barb and Mary were at the time, but once Barb had settled in Arizona, their relationship became tight, tight, and they became best friends. For the first time that year, Barbara was with us for our annual Thanksgiving gathering with good friends. Over the year, many of Barbara's friends joined us for that Thanksgiving. This gathering noise included our friends who had moved away perhaps from their original families to Arizona, and over time we kind of became a holiday family. We get together, catch up on the events of the year, share stories, and Barb fit into that group immediately. Also at that time, Mary had a group of longtime friends called the Tainteds. Imagine what that means. Barbara, Barbara fit in immediately like she'd done as long as Mary had. This group had a lot of fun together, going to the ballet, going out to dinner, who knows what else. Most importantly, I mean, Barbara had friends from the three places that she lived in her life. You know, she maintained lifelong friendships in Iowa Falls with her friends here in Wapaka, and in Arizona. Like Stacy said, she met so many friends, made new friends so easily, so quickly. She was good at friendship, and she was good at keeping up with everybody that she knew. In August 1995, we gathered here in Wapak for Marge and Howard's 50th wedding anniversary and wedding ceremony reactment at the Old Pipe House. 
followed by a great party for all the friends here in Wapaka. This weekend was well organized by Barbara and her friends here in Wapaka. We visited the home where the Johnson brothers and sisters were raised and saw the kids' initials carved into the barn column. Really an important family milestone for all of his family members. As you all know, Barbara loved to travel. In 1998, Mary and Barbara took their first overseas trip together to Tahiti, the first of many, as they realized that they were really very compatible travel friends. After that, they went to Egypt, India, Peru, China. Barbara and Don traveled to England, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, New Zealand, Australia. I was fortunate enough to travel with Mary and Barbara to Istanbul, other parts of Turkey, and South Africa. Our last trip together, two summers ago, we drove north through the American National Parks in the Rockies, into the Canadian Rockies, then over to Vancouver, Vancouver Island, before driving south down most of the Oregon and California Coastal Highway. And all of Barbara traveled to six continents. She had no desire to go to Antarctica like Mary did because it was just too cold for her. <laughs> 1998, Barbara moved into her Gilbert home where she finally had enough room and wall space for most of the old family photos and heirlooms that she'd accumulated over the years. It was always a treat to go to Barbara's home where you could just feel the presence of the family history. A lot of you are shaking your head. You know what, what her place was like. It was great. We came to realize the real quantity of all this family memorabilia that Barbara had when deciding how to distribute it last February and March. Mary and Stacy said many sleepless nights trying to figure out where all the stuff was going to go. So we thank a lot of those of you that agreed to take some of these important family items. When it was decided that Marge would finally come to Arizona, making it easier for Barbara and Mary to take care of in 2016, over the Memorial, Memorial Day weekend, Barbara and I drove a U-Haul truck with all of Marge's possessions from Wapaka to Arizona. We had a fun trip. That was a good time. I started out driving the first morning you know, on the rural highways out of here you know, in Wisconsin, doing a respectful 65, 60, 65 miles an hour you know, the U-Haul being the biggest thing I'd ever driven in my life. I was half scared to death of driving this thing. After a couple hours, it finally became Barbara's turn to drive. So we're going down the freeway, and I'm thinking, gosh, we're going awfully fast here. So I looked over at the speedometer. Barbara's going 80 miles an hour. Yeah. I didn't know that the U-Haul would go that fast, but that's when I, that's when I learned that she had a lead foot. <laughs> It's a good thing that she did, because otherwise that trip across the country would have taken many more hours than it did over the three days it took us. But we had a good time together for three days. When Barbara retired from her job managing the Scottsdale Senior Center, the daily lunch and entertainment program, we had a huge party for her, attended by many of her regular patrons, and also her many Valley Phoenix friends and acquaintances. Wonderful words were spoken, about how she made the program such a great success. It was obvious that Barbara was really going to be missed. As I, as I mentioned, Barbara and Mary were great friends. They talked on the phone a lot and about everything. But the only area of disagreement I ever heard was over a discussion about electronics. <laughs> like her dad, Mary's always been able to figure out how to make things work. Barbara, not so much. <laughs> Barbara's more like me. She just wants the damn thing to work properly, right? <laughs> there were many lengthy discussions, conversations over how to operate the TV controller, the iPhone, the iPad. In hindsight, we can laugh. These are very humorous discussions, but at the time, perhaps not. I also remember Barbara being so well organized and put together. She always had her Christmas ornaments and gifts purchased several years in advance for her kids and grandkids whom she adored. She was always so well dressed. And get this, she loved to iron. <laughs> you can tell whether her wardrobe was from Nordstrom's or Goodwill. The thriftiness that she learned as a child was taught to her by Margin Howard, 
carried throughout her life. It started when Margin Howard took out a thousand dollar policy when Barbara was born. And with the investment growth, growth she managed to complete her college education with that money. She also managed her, manis, managed her money so well that during her retirement years, she could do whatever she wanted, buy most anything. When Barbara's health issues started, she would always stay with us during her periods of convalescence. I came to appreciate what a silent fighter she really was. She never complained, always willing to chip in, help out, even though it was advisable maybe she, she wouldn't do anything. She, didn't do anything. She was always positive and encouraging right up to the end. I've got to end this with some thoughts about our last holiday season together with Barb. We've got a lot of pictures of that time, but it cannot describe the emotions of that gathering. Liz and Brooke and Alex and Harper came out to Arizona from Wisconsin. Stacy and Dave, Grayson, and Piper were there, just Barb's immediate family. It was last Christmas. The kids were away from home, which I'm sure made it difficult, certainly different for them. But we were all together. The love shown and felt was amazing. We knew this was our last holiday with Barb. So it was very sad, but at the same time, everybody made it so memorable and so full of love for each other. I don't know, maybe this wasn't so hard to write after all. You, you all were her friends. You know what I've been trying to express. You each have your own perspectives and memories of her. We were her important family and friends. Barb is just simply a wonderful, genuine person who had great values and a work ethic. I'm so glad to be part of her family and her friends. I was supposed to sing, um, but I need to do this before. We're supposed to sing, but I'm going to do this. Uh, because I don't think I can get through it after I hear the song. Anyway, these are uh, readings from Proverbs 31. A woman of noble character is worth far <laughs> rubies. She brings good, not harm, all the days of her life. She works with eager hands. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She's energetic and a hard worker and watches for bargains. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are well clothed. She is clothed with dignity and strength. She can laugh at the days to come and has no fear of old age. I'm not so sure about that one. <laughs> when she speaks, her words are wise, and kindness is the rule for everything she says. She watches all that goes on in her household and is never lazy. Her children stand and bless her. Many women do noble things, but you, my sister, surpass them all. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting, but a woman who gives the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring praise. Go with God, dear sister. So my mom's faith was really important to her, and Mary has picked Jesus Loves Me, so hoping that we can sing those three verses together. 
start with the first word and then y'all got to carry it on. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you. 
get back to the boathouse and we all have stories and memories. Um, at first, I did. I wanted to tell you what she meant to me and how hard it's been to lose her, to lose my mom. You know? That would just make me sad all over again. I'd just be wallowing in my own self pity. Oh, poor me, poor me. I lost my mom, my mom. But that doesn't help anybody, does it? it uh, if you really knew my mom, you know that's not the way she raised us. That's not. That's not the way she was. She wasn't like that. She, uh, she may have been a little strong-willed, a little stubborn, <laughs> but she was so selfless, completely selfless. Uh, she never made it about her. Um, it was never herself before anyone else. You know, it was. She put herself last. She would take care of everybody else and care about what they had to say. Um, I, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding when I say that. I've never met anybody like that. Ever. I've never met anybody that just was for everybody else, for other people. Uh, <laughs> I had a rough time writing this. <laughs> yeah. uh, she had compassion. We all have compassion, but she had it. Compassion, they just dropped the one I was speaking off of. <laughs> uh, she inherited that. She inherited that from her parents. Uh, Howard and Marge Johnson, she got that. Um, her sister Mary, she has those same qualities. Same ones mom had. Uh, there was a lot of good blood in that family, who most of you belong to. Um, most of the time, I struggle, you know, with my moral compass pointing in the right direction. They don't. Have, they, Johnson don't have that. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's not true. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna keep trying though. I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> I think we should all keep trying. Keep trying to follow her example, because if we do, you know, every little step forward we take makes the world a little better place. Um, so now I, I'm a little bit of a slow learner, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I did learn that first step, the first step to go, I, and I learned it from the best. I learned it from my mom. And that first step is the smile. Yeah. Do that you well. The smile. It's you know, uh, share a smile, all of you, and be kind. She's pretty kind. That's about it. Kind. Yeah. That's about, that's about it. Um, for me today, for me myself, you know, uh, it's all about my mom. But for Barbara, it's all about us. Yeah. You know, it wasn't about. It wasn't about her, it wasn't about me and Stacy, it was about all of us. And uh, she loved this. She, she would really love this. She'd be having so much fun with all of us here. So, thank you again for coming. And let's have some fun. <laughs> We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. So my mom always said that if she were president of the United States, every child in this country would get a chance to go to Disneyland. How cool is that? It's awesome. And I, believe it or not, I could not find a Disney song for my children to sing for her today. But we grew up watching every year, we would watch uh, The Sound of Music and The Wizard of Oz. So I picked The Wizard of Oz and uh, her grandchildren Piper and Alex are going to come up and sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow for you today.
we're going to bow our heads again and we're going to use the words that Jesus taught us how to pray. My Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. So my sister Abby, my sister Abby couldn't be here today. So she uh, wrote to me and said, now you need to stand up and tell them what I think. <laughs> so these are words from Abby. I'm very sorry to have to be in a position of writing something about my dear cousin Barbara. Since our first organized Johnson family reunion, we've lost too many. Ken and Ethel, Howard and Margie, Bobby, Judy, Scott, I want to come to those reunions and see those folks I grew up with and share memories. To imagine the empty spaces now is just unbearable. Barbara exemplified what the Johnson family stands for. Kindness, gentleness, integrity, love of family, humility, sweetness, loyalty, love, Christianity. I miss her so very much. I was able to sit with her on her, piano, on her patio and talk and talk and talk. When I stayed with her for my brother Scott's funeral, I will cherish that time forever. That's it. Another. Okay, this is from my sister-in-law, Bar uh, <laughs> Denise Evans, my brother's wife. As I reflect on my friendship with Barbara, the first thing that comes to mind is still waters run deep. Barbara was a strong presence without being loud or boisterous or assertive. She had an amazing capacity for listening and really hearing another person's heart. She was often the last to speak, but when she did, it was well worth hearing. My family was blessed by her decision to move to Arizona and make it home for over 20 years. We loved her so much and look forward to family dinners and occasions when we could get together. I particularly enjoyed going to her home in Gilbert. The house itself was unique and wasn't the typical tile and stucco Arizona architecture. Brick homes in Phoenix are rare and charming, but it was the inside that was so very warm and inviting. Besides being immaculate, of course, strolling through home, her home filled with beautiful antique furniture, old family pictures and mementos, prompted questions and subsequent stories of people and places that my Western family knew very little about. Barbara was a wealth of knowledge and we were blessed by her eagerness to share. There are those people in life that leave an indelible mark and I would say that Barbara was one of them. She was intensely private and never wanted to burden anybody. Of course, the notion Barbara would ever be even the slight inconvenience is ludicrous. <laughs> However, never complaining seems to be something of a Johnson trait. She lived up to it very well. In closing, I'll share my favorite memory. Several times over the years, Scott and I would meet Barbara for dinner in Gilbert and then hail, head to the Hale Theater for one of their fabulous plays. We all love productions. And engaged in fun discussions afterwards, sharing our impressions and critiques. Those were very special evenings and it hurts my heart to know they won't return. However, I find peace in knowing that both Barbara and my husband Scott are now resting in the arms of Jesus, and that makes me smile. To Stacy and Brooke, I know this day is bittersweet for you. Putting your mother to rest is difficult at any age, but I pray you find peace in knowing that when it comes to mothers, you had one of the very best. Okay, I'm going to do something a little crazy here. Uh, a couple of days after Barbara died, I was walking my dog. I walk my dog every day, 3 o'clock, and it's punctual. If you don't go get her, she comes and gets you. And I put on a pair of headphones, and I listen to music. 
And it was just a couple of days after Barbara passed it, and this song came on and really touched my heart. I had heard it vaguely in the past, but I heard it with lots of specificity this time. And I actually sent it to Stacy and said, you should listen to this song. It's by Ed Sheeran. It's called Supermarket Flowers. And I'm going to make two apologies right now. First, I'm going to apologize to Ed Sheeran because I'm changing the words to fit this family. And second, I'm going to apologize to all of you because I don't have any music. I'm going to sing this a cappella. This is Supermarket Flowers by Ed Sheeran. They took the supermarket flowers from the windowsill. She threw the old tea from a cup. Packed up the photo album David had made. Memories of a life that had been loved. Drew the get well cards and stuffed animals. Put some old kernel milk down the sink. She always told them, don't you cry when you're down. But there were tears every time that they went. Oh, in pieces, it's tearing them up. But they know a heart that's broke is a heart that's been loved. So they sang hallelujah. You were an angel in the shape of a bomb. When we fell down, you'd be there holding us up. Spread your wings as you go. God took you back, please send hallelujah your home. God took you back, please send hallelujah your home. Up the pillows, made the bed, stacked the chairs up, folded her nightgown neatly in a case. Brooke said he'd drive and put his hand on her cheek. To wipe a tear from the side of her face. They hoped that you see the world as she did, cause she knew a life with love is a life that's worth living. And they sang hallelujah. You were an angel in the shape of our mind. When we fell down, you'd always lay there, hold up, spread your wings as you go. When God took you back, when God took you back, he sang hallelujah, So we sing hallelujah. She was an angel in the shape of their mind. She got to see the people they had become. Spread your wings and I know. When God took you back, he said hallelujah, when God took you back, he said, Hallelujah. Oh. So, the other thing that I was asked to read, and it's part of your program today, so you can follow along if you want to, is a beautiful poem from Merritt Malloy called Epitaph. When I die, give what's left of me to children and to old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking down the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to give you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on in your eyes and not on your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die. People do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. That's the end of our program. We are going to return, of course, as the different eight different lakes that we're uh, riding around on this beautiful lady of the lake, back to the Coldwater Harbor. And when you get off the boat, you go up and around the building, all the way around. There's signage, but you're going to the boathouse. 
in the boathouse between four and eight, there will be some appetizers and drinks, and more importantly, an opportunity to continue to talk about how much we love Barbara. Thank you all very much.